The gaming industry is filled with sales injustices. There was Titanfall 2, which was sent out to die in an impossible release window with it now just being used as nostalgia bait for Apex Legends. Then there's Panzer Dragoon Saga, which released at a time when there were few people still playing the Saturn and its sales obviously suffered. However, for our money, the single biggest undeserved failure in gaming history has to be the Sega Dreamcast. The whole thing. Sega discontinued the Dreamcast more than two decades ago, yet the console maintains a dedicated following to this very day. It'd be easy to chalk this up to the curiosity of younger gamers and the nostalgia of older ones, however, doing so overlooks the true source of the Dreamcast's enduring appeal, its amazing library of games. Not only did Sega's final foray into the hardware market boast a series of exceptional arcade ports, but it was also the go-to platform for innovative console exclusives at the turn of the millennium, while its innovations, including online console play, proved what a trendsetter it truly, truly was. By the end of the Dreamcast's far too short three-year run, it had delivered a string of classic games across virtually every genre, many of which still hold up very well today. With that in mind, here's a roundup of the best Dreamcast games ever made. Whether you're booting up your console for the umpteenth time or just downloaded a retro gaming emulator, each of these titles will leave you as happy as Sonic in a new pair of sneakers, or as happy as a Sonic fan when they get made a moderator on their favourite forum. But before we get into this, this here will be our very last video in this series looking at the best games across the best consoles of all time. We've had a lot of fun. It's been... 25 videos and you've supported all of them pretty much so thank you for that apart from the xbox ones you guys really didn't care about those <laughs> to celebrate the end we've got a steam gift card to give away simply comment 25k gang down below and we'll pick a random winner next friday and now on to the most underrated video game console of all time number 20 daytona usa 2001 okay for one last time, spin that funky song. Yeah, <sighs> music peaked right there. They should just stop. They should have just stopped making it after that, to be honest. Daytona USA 2001 is basically a souped-up version of the iconic Daytona USA for the Dreamcast, with the inclusion of three brand new tracks and the championship mode, where players vie to become the king of Daytona. Anyone looking for thoughts and motorsport levels of racing simulation really need not apply here, as Daytona is pretty much the definition of an arcade racer. It's fast, brash and burns through more rubber than Hugh Grant on street corners in the mid-90s. Daytona USA 2001 wasn't all that innovative on the track, but it didn't need to be as one of the only online racers of its era. It's so beloved by its fans, in fact, that the online play was even brought back by its fans in 2023. Tough titties if you're in the UK though, as we and the rest of the PAL countries were presumably too busy patiently sitting in traffic to ever get online play for this absolute banger. Number 19, Crazy Taxi. The first of several terrific arcade ports on this list, Crazy Taxi is still the same mad adrenaline rush it was back in 2000. A sandbox racing game with a twist, it tasks players with ferrying passengers to their destinations as quickly, but not necessarily as safely, so basically like Uber, as possible. There are also stunt and mini games to keep you busy, and it all runs at a crisp 60 frames per second. Admittedly, Crazy Taxi can get a tad repetitive, even with its many console-only extras, but when the game's streamlined mechanics are also what makes it so addictive, and so easy to copy and still do a good job with, that's more than fine. See, The Simpsons Road Rage itself, a banger. Rather miraculously, the Game Awards 2023 revealed that Crazy Taxi would be coming back in the future with a brand new game. The trailer did look a little bit desaturated, so here's hoping the new Crazy Taxi is as vibrant as this certified Dreamcast classic. Also, if they bring back the offspring on the soundtrack, that's a certified Game of the Year contender right there. Number 18, Typing of the Dead. Listen, writers including a game where you write on a list of the best Dreamcast games is a bit predictable, but few could have predicted the direction House of the Dead would take here. Typing of the Dead typifies the off-the-wall creativity that made the Dreamcast so special. The game substitutes the House of the Dead 2's light gun for the Dreamcast's keyboard peripheral, which means players have to rely on the accuracy of their spelling and not the twitchiness of their trigger finger to survive. 
So yeah, Typing of the Dead is basically Typing Shooter reskinned as a zombie themed rail shooter. It's a bonkers concept that shouldn't work yet somehow does, thanks in large part to the game's goofy sense of humour and novel spin on a well worn genre. Need little Timmy to ace their spelling bee? Stick them in front of a Dreamcast and get them typing away with Typing of the Dead. Don't, don't worry about the crying. At least they'll be able to spell it afterwards. C R Y I N G. See? Type in the dead talk me that. Number 17, Space Channel 5. Few games typify the era in which they released quite like Space Channel 5. Could you imagine if Sony released a sci fi rhythm game catered to a female audience these days and also Michael Jackson was in it? One of the most stylish games of its time, Space Channel 5 mixed a retro futuristic 60s aesthetic with dance offs with aliens to frankly magical effect. Playing as Ulala, which makes me feel a bit icky to say, a space reporter who engages in bop it battles with said aliens, Space Channel 5 is a balmy melding of different vibes and scenarios that feels a little like disco warrior wear. A company who took many big swings in the 90s with not many of them always being big hitters. As you might expect, Space Channel 5 is a bit of a strange sell for some, leading to it suffering in sales, but if you can get on its very particular, very LSD wavelength, this is a short slice of originality that's worth tuning into. Number 16, Power Stone 2. Not too many people know about Power Stone these days, the views on our retrospective video certainly speak to that, but everyone who has played it has one simple word to describe it with. Banger. Power Stone 2 takes everything that was great about the first game and dials it up to 11. There are cooler fighters, bigger maps, better weapons and, best of all, more combatants on the screen at once. Unlike the first game, Power Stone 2 supports full player multiplayer, resulting in chaotic 3D brawls across dynamic environments. But don't let Power Stone 2's bombastic presentation fool you. This is also a deceptively deep fighting game, as you'd expect from Capcom the minds behind the Street Fighter franchise. Really the only thing wrong with Power Stone 2 is that it leaves you wanting more. Power Stone laid the groundwork for a lot of multiplayer games today, and while rumours of a reboot have gone very quiet indeed, we will never give up on our dreams of battering our friends with chairs once again. Number 15, Legacy of Kane, Soul Reaver. Legacy of Cain saw Reaver as one of a handful of games often synonymous with the PS1, yet often forgotten about on other platforms. See also Dino Crisis. That's a shame, as its Dreamcast port may just be its best version, boasting 60 frames per second gameplay, though the music is maybe a tiny bit more crunched. A dark adventure that no doubt traumatised some kids who played it, read me. Legacy of Kane's Soul Reaver is a bit of a gothic masterpiece that sees you playing as Roziel, an excommunicated vampire turned wraith who sets out on a quest to kill his old master, Kane. Imagine Tomb Raider mixed with the Crow mixed with Onimusha and you have some idea of the heady concoction Crystal Dynamics cooked up here. Plenty of games capture vibes, but few do so quite like this, a game with a style that feels completely impossible to emulate. Legacy of Kane has been deader than WWE Kane's brain cells for a good few years now. There's another video of ours you should watch, wink wink, and it's about time that damn well changed. Number 14, Grandia 2. Grandia 2 is often cited by some as being not just the greatest RPG on the Dreamcast, but the greatest on any console, period. It's not hard to see why either. From its finely tuned turn-based combat to its compelling story, Grandia 2 serves up pretty much everything fans of the genre are looking for, including playthroughs that can last for well over a hundred hours. A surprisingly anti-religious game for the dawn of the millennium, Grandia 2 isn't afraid of going down some pretty dark lanes in its story, with all six of your party members going through it, as they say. The game's anime-influenced 3D graphics, a first for the Grandia franchise, have also aged incredibly well, as has its well-calibrated learning curve. Grandia 2's deeply satisfying real-time combat system is accessible for RPG neophytes, while still presenting enough of a challenge to keep more seasoned gamers hooked. Bizarrely, we've seen nothing from Grandia as a whole entity since 2009's Grandia Online, which was shut down in 2012. A Grandia don't come for free, I guess. Number 13, Street Fighter 3, Third Strike. Honestly, what more can you say about Third Strike that countless other lists haven't? One of the most accessible yet deep as the ocean fighting games of all time, Third Strike is always going to strike a chord with players no matter which year you play it in. 
There are several fighting games on this list of the best Dreamcast games of all time, and for good reason. The console's catalogue includes some of the very best additions to the genre. Even amid such a competitive field, Street Fighter 3 Third Strike stands out as one of the strongest titles, particularly if you're a fighting game connoisseur, which probably means your esports name is something like Poo Poo Papa or Joe Biden. Nobody knows why they're like this, they just are. This arcade port rewards gamers willing to put in the hours to master the finer points of its mechanics with highly technical bout, one as much with strategy as button mashing. It looks great too, with each of its 20 playable characters brought to life via detailed, fluidly animated sprites. These upgrades and more rank Street Fighter 3 Third Strike among the most fully realised entries in the venerable franchise's history. Also, you can't get skins in this one that cost 80 quid. Crikey, what are we doing these days? Is Sneed Chungus behind this one? Joe Biden, maybe? Number 12, Fantasy Star Online. Fantasy Star Online is the textbook definition of you had to be there. Releasing at the dawn of our digital age, it's hard to explain just how revolutionary online gaming felt at the time to a generation that now has it as standard and always bullies me in Fortnite. Please, I am too old to get killed by Ariana Grande like a goddamn dog. The Dreamcast was ahead of its time in many ways, especially when it came to online gaming. RPG Fantasy Star Online represents Sega's most ambitious effort in this regard, and its most accomplished too. Players connect online to form teams of four to undertake quests, engage in real-time battles, and score loot while wandering the alien world of Raggle. Fantasy Star Online also had an offline single-player mode, however multiplayer was a markedly more enjoyable experience. In that sense, the game is even more trailblazing than its developers intended, as it predicts the rise of today's online-only titles, but is that a good thing? Fantasy Star Online 2 is still ticking along nicely today, and has generated nearly a billion dollars since it first released in 2012. Number 11, Dead or Alive 2. Dead or Alive is a series that you take terribly seriously at your own risk. It's the fighting game equivalent of a cheeseburger and fries, and all the better for it. But Dead or Alive 2 was far more ahead of its time than people realise, or even give it credit for. Ported from the arcade to the Dreamcast, Dead or Alive 2 juggled a lot of different mechanics, including juggling, jiggling, and jiggling while juggling. Dead or Alive 2 also pioneered punishing whiffs earlier than a lot of its competitors, along with tag team combos, with its stun system also feeling completely fresh at the time of release. You can also kick people out of church windows. That's always going to be pretty sick. What really helps Dead or Alive 2 though is how unashamedly extra and turn of the century it is, capturing the zeitgeist of the time in terms of style and packing some absolutely incredible animations for an over 20 year old game to boot. Dead or Alive as a series completely lost its way in recent years, but we feel like Dead or Alive 2 won't lose its appeal for many years yet. Number 10, Res. Res is another great example of how groundbreaking the Dreamcast library was back in the day, even if it never got the flowers it deserved at the time. A music game slash rail shooter hybrid that's inspired countless indie games, Res casts the player as a hacker navigating an AI system gone haywire. The narrative unfolds through a combination of visual storytelling and electronic dance music tunes, while the gameplay mechanics aim to elicit synesthesia by dynamically adjusting the soundtrack in response to the player's actions. Is Res niche? Undeniably, as the same kind of person who plays Madden each year won't like feeling their brain lifting off into the seventh circle of El Dorado. Does it belong on this list of the best Dreamcast games of all time though? You betcha. Res has been remastered in the shape of Res Infinite in recent years, including a VR mode just in case you have absolutely no need to do maths for the rest of the day after playing it. Res is a mind melder and an absolute whipper at that. Everyone should play this at least once. Number 9, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2. Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2 is the best game in a long series of games that easily rank among the best sports games of all time, and not just because of the soundtrack. Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2 debuted on the PlayStation, however the definitive version of the game, excluding later remixes and remakes, belongs to the Dreamcast. Supported by Treyarch, who were sadly long ago cast down in the Call of Duty content mines, the Dreamcast version of Anthony Hawk's Pro Skater 2 includes the same addictive gameplay, responsive controls, expansive levels, and licensed soundtrack as its PlayStation counterpart. 
What's different are the visuals, which have undergone a noticeable upgrade. The textures are better and the animation smoother, which makes each kit flip backflip F7540 underscore old school half flip Casper that much more satisfying to pull off. Radical. Later Tony Hawk games really tried to mix up the formula a bit too much, whereas Pro Skater 5 barely tried to do anything and still failed. But for us, the simple joy of collecting tapes and letters will always mark Pro Skater 2 out as the very best of the series. We will also accept Tony Hawk's Underground 2 though. Number 8, Shenmue. If this were a roundup of the most influential Dreamcast games of all time, Shenmue would have landed the top slot, and easily at that. Now, commonplace design elements such as quick time events, hyper detailed virtual sandboxes, and cinematic presentation all owe a lot to this 1999 title. That said, Shenmue's execution doesn't always live up to creator and co director Yu Suzuki's boundless vision. With sluggish pacing and uneven yet still often brilliantly cheesy voice acting, two of its most glaring flaws. Mario. Chaorio, atsamata for you, huh? It certainly feels like a game of its time when played now, and we probably maybe say it's the game that's aged the most out of everything here. Still, this action adventure game's impressive scope, sweeping storyline, and Virtua Fighter style real time combat help paper over any cracks. Follow up Shenmue 2 is also worth your time, although it lacks the freshness of the original. Shenmue 3 is also worth your time if you're looking for a modern game with almost no modern flourishes, and yet another cliffhanger for an ending that will probably never arrive. Best stock up on homemade pickles then. Number 7, Sonic Adventure 2. Sega devotees will no doubt balk at Sonic Adventure 2's relatively low ranking on this list of the best Dreamcast games of all time. After all, the 2001 3D adventure platformer updated the Sonic franchise even more so than its predecessor for the modern era, complete with stunning, for the time, 3D graphics, inventive linear level design, and online functionality. Sonic Adventure 2 has several shortcomings that hold it back from true greatness today though, notably its slightly dodgy camera and a bit too cheesy at some points voice acting. It also possibly peaks slightly early, with the iconic Cityscape ranking as one of the best stages in any game ever, and the rest of them not being quite as good. Still, this is a landmark entry in the Sonic canon, and its high velocity gameplay is satisfying enough to overcome its few missteps. It's holding up fairly well as well, though the GameCube version is arguably the definitive way to play this, with the port coming around shortly after Sega pulled out of the console game following the Dreamcast's collapse. Rip. Number 6, Marvel vs. Capcom 2 New Age of Heroes. It's getting a tad repetitive at this point, but Marvel vs. Capcom 2 New Age of Heroes is yet another worthy contender for the greatest fighting game of all time title. Not only does it perfect the fast paced tag team mechanics of the first entry in the franchise, but it also adds a variable assist system and free on free gameplay into the mix to craft a game that truly doesn't feel like it's aged a day. Marvel vs. Capcom 2's roster of fighters is similarly amped up. There are a staggering 52 characters to choose from, none of which are additional purchases. What? We used to have it so good, guys. While well, the mixture of 2D sprites and 3D backgrounds results in a more striking aesthetic. Your mileage will vary on the jazz infused soundtrack. We think it's a banger, naturally, but otherwise, Marvel vs. Capcom 2 is about as close to perfection as fighting games get on the Dreamcast or otherwise. The outpouring of love for this game in more recent years has seen prices for it rise to pretty high numbers, even disc only, but unfortunately it looks like Marvel vs Capcom as a whole is now pretty much done due to Infinite's failures. Number 5, Quake Free Arena. Even among the very best Dreamcast games of all time, first person shooter Quake Free Arena is unique for being a port considered on par with its PC progenitor, especially if you manage to tear yourself away from the keyboard on Typing of the Dead to use it here. Quake Free Arena even allowed Dreamcast and PC players to compete in the same cross platform deathmatches, and the port's impressively stable frame rate meant that those signing in via console actually had a genuine shot at winning. Obviously you'd need the keyboard and mouse to get anywhere near the internet cafe dwelling Red Bull addicts of the time and also that your mum isn't on the phone, but you still had a fighting chance. And even if they didn't come out on top, Quake Free Arena's lightning quick gameplay, polished visuals and rocket jumping outrageousness were usually enough to soften the sting of defeat. 
We haven't had a new Quake in quite a long time, but there's been rumblings of something new from Quake, um, quaking in recent times. It's been too long. Let's get a new one. Number four, Jet Set Radio. Remember the drama around graffiti? How silly little pictures on walls annoyed so many broadsheet readers. Jet Set Radio captured the counterculture scene masterfully well at the time, so it's no wonder so many modern games are inspired by it. As far as video games go, Jet Set Radio is the epitome of cool. From its cel-shaded aesthetic to its killer soundtrack of original and licensed tracks, this hybrid action skating game has style to spare. Better still, Jet Set Radio backs up its superficial charms with substantive gameplay involving a combination of tricks, racing, combat and exploration. Players glide around the large and it must be said gorgeous sandbox environments, spray painting walls and outclassing rival gangs and corporate heavies alike as they go. Is the story a little bit forgettable? Sure. But who cares when grinding around Tokyo is this much fun and when your game sums up the look and feel of an era in pop culture quite this well? And we're even getting a new game! Guys, all you have to do is demand something for decades and you eventually get everything that you want. It's easy really, this stuff. It's easy. Number 3. Resident Evil Code Veronica Capcom's Resident Evil franchise has taken several leaps forward over the course of its 25 plus year history, and Resident Evil Code Veronica represents one such leap. Unlike previous entries in the long-running survival horror series, Resident Evil Code Veronica eschews pre-rendered backgrounds and fixed viewpoints. Instead, the game takes advantage of the Dreamcast's more powerful hardware to deliver real-time 3D environments and a dynamic camera. This made controlling protagonists Claire and Chris Redfield a more immersive experience than anything franchise veterans were used to, particularly when Resident Evil Code Veronica's in-game cinematic segue near seamlessly into actual gameplay. Yes, Code Veronica arguably started Resident Evil's turn into the silly blockbuster territory with its bombastic action moments, and yes, Steve should probably have been thrown into the nearest body of water immediately, but Code Veronica's got a cult following for a very good reason. With Capcom claiming that they're making more Resident Evil remakes soon, it'd be good to see more people appreciate this often overlooked gem, and also to give Steve a redemption arc where he isn't a complete arse. Number 2. Skies of Arcadia Do you love to go a-wandering beneath the clear blue sky? Then Skies of Arcadia is the game for you. For many fans of single-player gaming, Skies of Arcadia remains the best RPG ever made. And if advances in game design and technology have robbed this 2000 classic of some of its shine, as well as its GameCube port probably being a bit more popular, it nevertheless remains the finest example of its kind on the Dreamcast. Originally planned for the Saturn, Skies of Arcadia's story and characters are compelling. Its world is huge and beautifully rendered, and the balance it strikes between turn-based combat and exploration is near perfectly judged, with the element system for combat really mixing things up for the better. Some games suck you in right from the jump, a description that very much applies to Skies of Arcadia, even now. We mentioned at the start of this video that the industry can be pretty unfair sometimes, and that certainly applies here as Skies of Arcadia sold poorly, and a potential JRPG flagship series never got off the ground. We will soon have two Madden NFL 25 games, but only one Skies of Arcadia. Really makes you think. Really makes you think. And at number one, Soul Calibur. Was there really any other choice for number one? Sure, many of the games on this list hold up exceptionally well for their age, arguably more so than a lot of the games on the PS2, but Soul Calibur is one of the few that could be released more or less as is today and still make a pile of money. Everything about this sequel to Soul Blade is timeless. Its stunning graphics, deep mechanics, hyper-responsive controls and innovative 8-way movement systems still hold up well, even in comparison to newer installments in the franchise. What's more, Namco also included several additional modes and a mountain of unlockable content with Soul Calibur's home release. Thanks to these extras, there's plenty to keep players coming back, even if they're booting up the game for the zillionth time. While you can't make Squidward fight Geralt of Rivia in this one, Soul Calibur remains a timeless slice of fighting game history, with booting your mates into the sea or constantly kicking them even after you've beaten them, just absolutely timeless fun and fighting game heritage. And for our money, the best Dreamcast game of all time. Also, Nightmare for Life. 
Big love for Big Strong Big Sword Boy. And that was our list for the best Sega Dreamcast games of all time. And that is our series for the best games ever across all of the best consoles ever made. Done. I don't know if we're missing any consoles, maybe. I think there's Atari and stuff we could do, but I I don't think people really like Atari these days. If you, if you do want to watch that video, let us know down below. But yeah, I don't see that really getting a lot of views. I just wanted to say, if you've been watching it the whole way, this series, that it means a lot to us. And yeah, it's, uh, it's helped this channel look grow a lot and we've taken a lot from it. We've had great fun and we put out loads of content and videos that we're very proud of and we hope you enjoyed them. But we're only just getting started, so tune back soon for what we're cooking up next. And don't forget to join the competition. I'm Jimmy Dinellen for Culture Vultures and be sure to leave your comments down below in the comments down below.